So we've established it's a new year. I have a question. Do you still dream about what this year might hold? I mean, as, as we begin, do you sit on your tippy toes of expectation, excited for what might lie ahead? Well, I think that some of us, maybe without even realizing it, we've built up walls. Walls that are blocking us and our vision and our hope and our dreams for what might lie ahead. But let it not be so, because today we are going to identify those walls and speak about the one who has the power to bust through. So I hope you'll stay with me in this second message in our Letting Go, the Pathway of Breakthrough series. Now, as we begin, I want to say hi and welcome to Oxnaz Online. We are a digital church community, and my name is Pastor Jody. Super glad that you're joining us today. Now, I'd love to know that you're out there, so if you hit that thumbs up button, it's kind of say how you say hi to me in digital church. I, I'm watching. And, you know, stay tuned till the end, and I'll tell you all about how you can become part of our church, learn more about what it means to be a church online. But for today, I'm super glad that you're with me. Walls are about to come down. Now, I know when I talk like this, some of you already are thinking, nah, not for me, but yet you're still here. I want to, I want to start with this story. This one might really help you. I'm going to talk about a story in scripture where there is no question, there is no doubt, God 100% had a plan for good, to prosper his people, to give them an awesome future, to bless them, all these things. But did they believe? Did they obtain it? Well, let's jump into the story together. It's the story of the people of Israel. Now, if you go way back in the Old Testament, you will learn about the Hebrew people. They were enslaved for 400 years, but God called them out of slavery into freedom to be his own people. Well, there's the story of how they came to the Red Sea and they were chased by Pharaoh's army, but God parted the sea, literally parted the Red Sea so they could walk across, closed it behind them, destroyed the armies chasing them and took them across. And he there at Mount Sinai on the other side, he formed a covenant with them that they would be his people and he would be their God. He gave them the commandments to teach them how to live, the tabernacle where his presence was with them. And for a year, he prepared them to be his people, but he had promised them a new land. Now this was a sure thing, a promise, a covenant from God Almighty. So the time came, the cloud of his presence began to move out and the people were to follow him uh, follow the cloud of God's leading into the new land. So they go, and well, they ran into trouble, but that's a story for another day. I want to tell you about when they were about halfway there, the Lord said, okay, it's time. I want you to send some men to explore the land. I'm what? Yeah, I'm giving to Israel, to you. I want you to go check out this gift that you are to receive from me. So 12 spies went out and one from each tribe went in for 40 days to explore the land and they came back, that's right, with tremendous fruit and a report about what they saw. Listen to what they said. You can find this in Numbers chapter 13. They begin to tell him, Moses, they said, we went into the land to which you sent us and it does flow with milk and honey. Here are its fruit, so big it took a couple of guys to carry a bunch of grapes. Then there's the but, right? But the people who live there, they're powerful. And the cities, they're fortified and very large. We can't attack these people. They begin to murmur. They're stronger than we are. The land we explored, they gave this report. They said it devours the people living in it. And all the people we saw there, they're of great size. The Nephilim are there, that's the giants. They said, we seemed like grasshoppers in our own eyes and we looked the same to them. Well, before we go on, think about that for a minute. What do you hear? 
like when you hear this story and you picture it happen where God did all these miracles and brought them to this place and said, here's the promised land. And it indeed was like it said, but then what do you hear? They wavered. They hesitated. Well, the people are big. Well, they're scary. Well, what if? And all that, right? They doubted God. Now that might be hard for you and I to get our heads around. I mean, come on, if God literally parted a sea before us and fed us with manna and quail right from the sky every day, if we seen that kind of power and miracles and literally stood before the presence of God in the cloud in the temple, maybe we think we would do a little better. Maybe we think we would trust God that if he said this is ours, it would be for us. But are we different? What do you think as you listen to this, as you picture them? It's sad. It's unfortunate that they would doubt and waver. I mean, we get the benefit of hindsight, which is always 2020. But think about it for a minute. Why did they doubt God after all that God had done to demonstrate his goodness and his love? Why did they doubt his promise? Well, I can tell you this. I'm not sure why they would make that mistake, but God was not very happy. In fact, he declared destruction for those people, but Moses prayed and interceded. And so he said, as surely as I live, and as surely as the glory of the Lord fills the whole earth, not one who saw my glory and the signs I performed in Egypt, just like what we were just saying, not one who had that benefit and blessing, but doubted, not one of them will ever see the land I promised on oath to their ancestors. Now, this breaks my heart because here it is, 100% proven for sure, God had a gift, a promise, a blessing for his people, but doubt kept them from it. That breaks my heart. I mean, when you think of it, in this story, if we were to unpack it in greater detail, when 12 went in, two came back. Joshua and Caleb, they said, let's go. God has given us this land. Of course they saw the people were big and strong, but they saw God and trusted him. They said, let's go. But the other 10 said, no. This hurts me because so much today of what I see in this world is the majority saying, no, God isn't. Don't believe that. He isn't. But I feel like one of the two who said, yes, listen to us. Listen, please. God is worth trusting. He's worth believing. But they didn't and they missed out. And I think, oh, Lord, I don't want that to be the story of my ministry. I, I want to be able to tell the story like Joshua and Caleb and have the people say, okay, what were we thinking? Let's go. Let's do it. But they didn't listen. And it breaks my heart to think that they all died without obtaining the promise. And the truth is, we can too. And that right there could just be enough to pause this video and just pray. Because that is hardcore truth. 100% promise of God missed by their choice. And we can choose today and miss it too. But God has plans. What if we didn't? What if we believed him instead? Look at this. This is God's word for you. He says, my plans are for good. What, what was that? Yeah, that's right. My plans for you are good, not for disaster, but to give you a future and a hope. Friends, in 2023, God says, my plans for you. It doesn't mean that we're going to have everything happy, happy. That's God isn't just most interested in everything being easy, but his plans are to give us a future that matters, a legacy and a life of purpose, of meaning, of hope. That is his promise. But just like the, the world, there's voices that will come at you, the majority and say no, but some will cry out, believe, believe. Let me ask you, do you? Do you believe that God 
has good ahead for you. I'm saying it. I'm giving testimony today. But do you believe it? Really, as you sit here at the beginning of 2023, how do you feel about the year? Do you trust that, that God has more? See, that's what we're talking about. Letting go the pathway to breakthrough. We want to get through from where we are to, to the next level into the deeper things of God. Some of you might feel like, well, I'm good enough. You know, I, I follow Jesus. I'm just fine right here. Really? Really? I, I'm going to tell you, I have... I have been on the, the fields of Africa and held some beautiful little children and felt God's love pouring through my body, touching and holding these children. I have prayed for people and seen and felt the power of God move. I have witnessed God doing amazing things. I have felt him do things inside my life and my heart. And I'm going to say, I don't have enough. I want to press through. I want to know him more. I want to walk deeper and further, breaking down walls, busting through to all that God has for me. That's what I want for my life. That's what I pray for you too. Let's be the kind of people who say no more walls. Last week, we talked about letting go of the invisible shackles that we put on our hands when we walk in unforgiveness. Let's go, let go of failure. Let's forgive and break through. Well, what if we said today, let's go of doubt and smash down the walls that are keeping us from where God wants to take us because we build them. Disappointments, we build them. Doubt, we build them. Fears, we build them. And then we get to this point, and maybe you know it, maybe you feel it in your heart, where we stand at the opening of a new year and we can hardly believe for good. But that's not true. That, that is the work of the enemy. That's the work of the walls. But oh, get ready, because I'm about to tell you something exciting. We serve the God who literally is the God of breaking through. Let me show you where that's in Scripture. In 2 Samuel, you will read that David faced a mighty army and he defeated them. And do you know what he said? He said, the Lord had broken through my enemies before me like a breakthrough of water. He, he said a kind of like water bursting through a dam. The word is Perez and it literally means a rupture in a wall that causes it to break down. That's what he said is the name for our God. He is the God of breakthrough and he can do that to whatever wall we build up in our life. What's impossible for us is possible. Impossible for us is possible with God. That's the truth, friends. Man, if we could just get a hold of it, if we could just begin to say, God, help me see those walls. Help me to believe. Help me. Help me, God. Put a little fissure, a rupture, a crack, and then come with your power and destroy the walls of doubt that are holding me back. And then, look at this. Look what Paul said. Man, this might be one of my favorite, favorite verses in all of Scripture. He said, now, glory be to God, who by what? His mighty power working in us. That's right. God working in us. He's able to do a little bit of good. Maybe hopefully something good this year. No. He's able to do far more than we would ever dare to ask or even dream of. Infinitely beyond our highest prayers, desires, thoughts, and hopes. Well, I can tell you that I can dream pretty big and I can hope pretty high and I can pray pretty intense. And if God's power in me can do more than I can believe or imagine or hope, man, God, come and bust through the walls of doubt and fear and lack that hold me back because I believe with you, it's possible. And that's what I want for me and for you. Are you with me? If you are, why don't you drop a comment right now? Say, I'm with you, Pastor Jody. Let's do it. 
And so what we're talking about in this series is letting go. So we're going to now turn and make what I called last week a faith pivot. We're going to let go of doubt and we're going to grab onto trust. We're going to turn from doubt and turn to trust and begin to believe that what God says and the more of God and good things and things that we couldn't even dream of are for our future. There's not one believer today, not one child of God who should look at a new year and say, I don't know, I guess whatever. Meh. That shouldn't be for us because if we turn to him and believe and let go of doubt and let go of unforgiveness and what we're going to talk about next week, we can trust and believe that God will take us to know him more and to fulfill his purposes and plans that are written in the books of heaven for our lives. That's what I want. I hope you're with me. But rather than closing, I just want to give a quick acknowledgement to the fact that it's not easy. The truth is, believing God and trusting in Him is a work of faith. That's why it's called a faith pivot. And faith is being confident in what we can't see. And if you go back and think about God's people, they had witnessed so many miracles. They had literally seen, they knew God was real, but they still found it hard to trust him by faith because their physical eyes saw an enemy that was stronger than them. I just want to acknowledge today that the, the idea of letting go, it might seem easy, but I recognize it has always been a struggle for God's people to live by faith. We need to. God says, without faith, it is impossible to please me. But seeing God first more than the physical things we see, like the sickness, the disease, the, the job that, that we lost, the paycheck that we need, those things are so tangible. It's hard to push them aside to trust God for good when the things around us are difficult and hard. I want to show you how it's been a struggle from the beginning for God's people. But... But God, it's not impossible. So let's look at that for a minute before we close. Okay, two quick stories. We're going to look at the Old Testament and the New. So in the Old Testament, we're talking here about God's people. So let me just give you a real quick, if you're listening and you're not a follower of Jesus yet, we're not condemning or coming against you and saying, you have to believe today. This was for God's people who knew God but they were just not really like living like they trusted him. So if you are pursuing him, I pray that you will continue. Reach out. We are here, myself, Pastor Tanya, we're here to talk to you if you have questions. Hit the inbox and let's begin to help you and talk and discuss the things that are, that are coming up that are making it difficult for you to pursue God. But if you consider yourself one of his own, I want you to think of this message that Elisha, you know, had for God's people in the northern kingdom. He said, and this is one of the great stories of the Old Testament, he said, kind of get all Israel, God's people together, get them to join me on Mount Carmel with all the prophets of Baal and Asherah who are supported by Jezebel. So it was a showdown of the gods. And Elijah stood in front of them. And look what he said, how much longer will you waver? That's what I want you to hear today. How much longer will you, people of God, waver between two opinions? If God is God, follow him. If something else is God or if God's not real, you know, follow them. And of course, the prophets of Baal called out to their gods, but their gods were not real and they could not answer by fire. But the God of heaven, the God I serve, the God I pray you serve, that God came and answered by fire and he demolished the sacrifice. He proved himself to be the true God of Israel. And the people said, wow, man, we're sorry. And they turned to him. What would it take today for, for you to hear God's voice and saying, stop wavering, stop the doubting, constructing the walls and make a decision today to let go so you can fully embrace the Lord. See, that has been always a struggle for God's people. And let's jump 
to the New Testament. Was it any better after Jesus came and he did all the miracles that he did, that the people that he healed, he proved himself to be God. He said, I'm going to die and then I'm going to be raised from the dead and he did it. Now that's somebody that you can follow. He did it. But as his church began to follow him, look what he said to the church in Laodicea. He said, I know the things you do, that you're neither hot nor cold. I wish you were one or the other. Do you kind of hear it like Elijah? You're wavering. But since you're like lukewarm water, neither hot or cold, I will spit you out of my mouth. And what God said were words of strength and power to awaken the church to repent to turn, to make a faith pivot from doubting to trusting. That's literally what this word was meant for. So what if we, the church, heard that message today and we said, okay, God, I see it. I see from the very beginning, people have struggled to trust you. Israel did. The, the New Testament church did. I have found it hard. I have built walls of doubt. I, I, I don't look at the new year with hope and possibility. I don't know if I believe you have good for me. Because, because, what if, what if, excuses, what if we were to let it all go? No more doubt. And God could do a new thing. That's what the butterfly represents. Letting go and something new can be born. That's what God wants to do in your life this year. Will you let go? That is literally, friends, the pathway to breakthrough. And now as we close, I want to leave you with a really awesome quote from none other than A.W. Tozer. He said, God is looking for people through whom he can do the impossible. Let it be me. What about you? But then he said, what a pity that we plan only the things we can do by ourselves. Let's not be that, people. Let's, let's be the ones through whom God can do the impossible. I'm going to challenge you today to let go. Let go of doubt. Let go of wavering and waffling between what God says. Begin today to say, Lord Jesus, come and break down the walls in my life. I want to believe, help my unbelief, and you will see that God is faithful and he will do what he said. What if we today said, we're going to do it together. We're going to begin letting go. What could God do through his people, Oxnaz Online, through our, our home church, Oxford Church of the Nazarene? If we begin to say, God said it, I believe it, that settles it. If we begin to live by the core principle that God is who he says he is, he can do what he says he can do, and that I am who he says I am, you are who he says you are, we believe God, we trust him, we let go of doubt, come Lord, God of breakthrough, and shatter the things that are keeping us from going deeper into your purposes and plans for our lives. Man, I'm ready to do it. Who's with me? I love to hear from you. If you're with me, I want to pray specifically for you. Pastor Tanya is going to pray for you. So write a comment or send out through our website. Send us a message through online. Whichever way you want to reach us on social. We're very social. Reach out. I want to know who's with me. Let's pivot. By faith, release doubt, embrace trust. Are you with me? Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you first and foremost for your patience with us. Lord, you, you reveal yourself to us and call us to be your children. For many of us listening, you have come to live inside us to set us free. You've shown us that you're real and you're true, and yet we waffle and we waver and we struggle and we doubt and we live in fear. God, forgive us. Forgive me. Forgive the one that's listening right now. We say we're sorry, God. We thank you for your love and your mercy and your patience, and we ask for you to forgive us. We ask for you to come, God, into the walls that we have put up in our lives and break through. We release and we confess our unbelief. We release our doubt and our fears and our wavering and our waffling, and we make a decision today. 
we will trust you, but it's so hard for us, God. So come in your strength and your power. Do what only you can do. Be our father, be our leader, be our shepherd, our guide. We give you that space in our life. We will trust you. We will obey you because we trust that your words for us and your directions are for our good. We'll stop trying to go our own way. We'll stop living beneath what you have for us, your children. God, help each listener today to break through in their heart, to release it to you, and to begin to walk in the destiny that you have for them. I pray an anointing on their life right now. I feel it even here. It doesn't always happen, God, but I feel it. I pray over that one who is listening and says, it's me. I want to, God. I pray a double portion. Give them provision. Give them vision, passion, gifting to build the church. Bring the healing. Bring strength. Use them for mighty deeds. And I pray, God, that we'll hear a testimony of what you've done. Oh, God, you're good. Break through for your people today as we embrace you releasing doubt. In Jesus' name, amen. <laughs> wow. Um, I really feel that God is hearing you and he's doing something. So love to hear from you. As I promised in the beginning, check out Facebook. If you're on Facebook, our, our church building for online church is our Facebook page, Oxnaz Online. It's where you'll find the message and lots of good stuff. Then we have some groups where we do devotionals, Oxnaz Daily Devotions. Pastor Tanya is in there every day so that we can talk and learn and grow together. Oxnaz Community Group, we pray for each other, we share, get to know each other. And of course, you can check out our website where you can learn lots more. But we want to hear from you. We've got great things coming up. Check out our news and events because we're going to be doing some online um, connections, maybe some uh, Bible studies that you would like to be part of. So let's hear from you. Let's keep in touch and join me next week for the conclusion of Letting Go, The Pathway to Breakthrough. God bless you. Have a great week. Thank you.